What's up, everybody? It's me, The Spirit here. And in today's video, we're going to talk about Borders Gate 3's success and why it changes everything. So as you guys know, ever since Borders Gate 3's release, Larry Studios has been getting a lot of flack, or at least a lot of discourse, because of how well the game has been polished upon release. Now, I will say this. When it comes to Borders Gate 3, this game single-handedly will be most likely will be changing the way how the gaming scape goes from here on out. Developers will no longer be able to use excuses anymore as to why their games are either buggy, broken, unoptimized, and just not playing fun for the players. Now, as you guys know, there's been plenty of discourse around Larian Studios from various gaming developers out there stating that there's not enough dead time in the world in order to polish out their games. But as you guys know, Larian is basically an indie studio slash AA studio who was able to outshine most game developers right now which is why they honestly became an anomaly in the gaming space. This surprised not only developers, but also consumers as well. So what that means is that it comes to show that consumers are not the top priority of these game developers or publishers. It's all about the profit. When you actually cherish and care for your community, then your community will be happy and they'll gladly pay money for your game or for your product. But in this day and age, it's not that's not the point anymore because it's all about the shareholders or the or the guys in suits, you know. It's all about them and why it matters. Which is why Borders Gate 3 has become an anomaly in this space because Larian Studios, they they were a struggling company, a company that literally was going to go bankrupt a couple of times, you know. If I recall correctly, you know, the reason why the, the whole Divinity series was actually created was because, you know, Larry wanted to create their own DD, you know, based game, but you know, the whole DD, you know, license or whatever was like, hey, yo, you gotta create your own game, kind of tell us what you got, you know, show us what you got, basically. So that's what they did. And now they did that and look where Borders Gate 3, look at the success. Now, here's a question for you guys who are watching this video right now. When or what was the last game that you played that you actually had fun playing while also being a pretty great experience that you can play for the most part fully through without having any much interference and i mean really think about this go on i'll wait for you so getting into the meat and potatoes here you might be asking yourself so disparity what do you mean by the industry is going to be changing because of what is degree well this is because now players and consumers are going to start keeping these game developers and publishers more accountable. We're tired of seeing these yearly releases of games becoming buggy, terrible. We're tired of seeing the whole nickel and diming of live service. You know, don't, don't we miss the days when you just get a feature complete game and then also maybe an expansion pack to say, oh, yes, more content instead of this nickel and diming of DLCs, you know? Because these days you don't even get a feature complete game anymore, you know? You're basically buying partial of the game and saying, hey, we'll promise to either fix this game or we'll promise to add more content in later, depending how game sales go. And I feel like that nowadays, it's more so like they're trying to see on how much they can get away with right now. That's what the gaming industry is really working on doing at the moment, which is quite insane to me, honestly. And so I'm glad that players are starting to keep these developers at, at a higher standards. And so hopefully this gives them more depth time. I'm tired of hearing, oh, we're coming out with this game in the next you know, six months when you know damn straight that your game needs to be more polished. It needs another year. It's like some games that you know that you recently came out and you're just like, damn, I really wish this game had like another six months to a year of development time, you know, instead of coming out now. Because maybe then or at this time, we'll have a better product. We as gamers shouldn't have to accept this whole fallacy of bring it out now, we'll fix it later. No, you don't have to accept that anymore. You know, this again, this changes it. This, this is the, the catalyst, I believe, you know. The only thing that we can do as gamers is just vote with our wallets. But you know, that's, that's easier said than done because the majority of players, they act like they care, but at the end of the day, they really don't. Now, as you guys see here, we're at Open Critic for Border Skate 3. And look how much this game has become. Border Skate 3 August 3rd came out top critic average of 97% with 100% critics recommend. Open PC Gamer 97, Hobby Consoles 96, IGN Spain 1010, Gaming Trend 100 out of 100. Gaming Rant, 4.5 out of 5. Guardian, 5 out of 5. You know, so they keep going on and on and on out of all these critics here. But that just shows how much polish and how great Boulder Skate 3 has really become. You know, this is why, this is why things like this matter. No game other than, hell, Tears of the Kingdom has come close to hitting this. Well, you can probably say Hogwarts Legacy as well, but that got a lot of flat because of uh, the whole J.K. Rowling situation. But besides the point, though, you know, this game has just been an amazing product you know coming back over to metacritic you know look at this 97 percent score 92 user score it keeps going up 
and that's just insane. The insanity. You got over 2791 positive, you know, you got 118 negative. My main thing for what I see from people, especially from the people on Twitter, by the way, is like a lot of people don't want to play the game because, oh, the whole bear sex scene. And what's even crazy is that the whole bear sex scene was, you don't have to, you can avoid the entire thing. So it's not even an issue, which is actually quite funny to, at least to me, you know? So that's something that's really not much to actually complain about. And so reading some of the stuff here, you know, this guy says power is a power unlimited. More than any RPG in the most recent history, Border Skate 3 challenges you to experiment with many fantastic games to solve, downing the rich, unprecedented, detailed fantasy world where Larian has the most wonderful adventures, creatures, and characters in store for you. On top of that, it, it hits a nostalgic chord for me and Dungeons and Dragons element, a huge pill. A 100, therefore, nothing less than justified. See, that's crazy. And I've been playing all weekend and I'm constantly uh, blown away by the insane amount of freedom that player has and how the story unfolds. I've caught and expand, you know, and that's exactly how I feel, you know, let me tell you guys, this is the, game, the game's release. I went from 30 hours of early access to over a hundred hours. I've not been to a game like this in so long. It's just, that's just how great it is. And that's what I love about gaming, like at least Larian, Larian, they got it. They got it down, and that's that's great, you know. And what's, oh yeah, I'm just, I'm I'm excited and I'm mad at the same time. <laughs> and I'll let me tell you why. So I'm mad because game developers right now are just coping. They're coping, and they're trying to downplay this. Like this is not some, something small. This is something that's huge for the gaming industry, man. Like this is something that's going to be better for everybody because you know we see better products. You know, this is something that gaming is needed because let me tell you guys the gaming industry is a billion dollar industry think about a billion dollars they have they make money they make bank so you're telling me that you cannot create a great product because oh we don't have the dev time well no you have the dev time quit making these unrealistic deadlines you know quit that crap if you would quit making unrealistic deadlines you know maybe you might have a great pro a better product you know maybe you wouldn't have to keep patching out your games every every time a new game comes out uh it just annoys the hell out of you dude and like don't and let me say don't get me wrong it really sucks that you have to look elsewhere for for great games you can't look at the triple a industry anymore you can't you know you have to look elsewhere here you got rockstar coming out with red dead redemption the first game on the switch and ps4 just porting the original game and not doing anything else with it. You know, you have Creative Assembly trying to upcharge 150% more for DLC for Total War Warhammer 3. You have freaking Activision coming out with Call of Duty every single year that doesn't come out with. Imagine a Call of Duty game that comes out every two, three years that's actually really well polished with new gameplay elements. It helped maybe even a better open world aspect. I don't know. Just imagine certain things that happen. But the thing is, is that in this day and age, a lot of these companies though, are afraid to do to do new things because they, they don't want to break the norm let's say imagine a a call of duty game that's an rts all right or a apex card game i don't know imagine certain things certain changes and stuff these companies are afraid to do they're just afraid you know and but hey y'all at the end of the day this is from a gamer's perspective you know because it's hey if i give a good kind of perspective i'm gonna be considered something of a family if i give a bad perspective i'm gonna be considered as a uh, hater or something of the sorts. I'm just here down the line to enjoy a great game, a great product. And like I said, Motors Gate 3 y'all just hits every mark for me. Because let me, I'll tell you guys this. Back in 2019, I was actually gonna quit video gaming for quite a while because games were just boring to me. But then you know what though? I played Breath of the Wild and that brought me back. And on top of that, I played Yakuza Like a Dragon, played the game twice on over and I rarely play games twice like that. And that kind of just shows me that, hey, if you can make some great products, then you can keep the consumer in, you can keep the consumer happy, basically. And so that's literally what this game's done for me, you know? It's keeping me happy, it's keeping me motivated, there's no live service in it, there's no microtransactions. like it's just a great game to just play, sit down with your friends, hell, you can even co-op with your friends, you know? The only thing I wish Larry could do is just add six player co-op in there maybe, but uh, you know, it's, it's already hard enough to get six players or six friends if you have any friends. So my last thing to say about this, guys, is Larry and Studios, Thank you for creating a great product. Thank you for being consumer friendly and listening to your community. Thank you for the three years of early access to help fix out and iron out lots of bugs, which a lot of game developers, even with their millions of dollars, cannot do what you did with Borders Get 3. So I applaud you for that, Larry. So just keep up the good work. 
and I'll see you guys for the next one. If you guys enjoyed this video, definitely consider liking, subscribing. Thank you guys for the support and all that you guys do. And I'll see y'all for the next video. Peace out. Much love. Have a good y'all. If you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like and also hit the bell notification down below. Thanks for watching.